So thank you for joining us um, and welcome to our Charlotte Radiology's inaugural Advancing Patient Care with Radiology webinar series. <clears throat> Today's session, 3T MR imaging of joints decreases the need for arthrography is presented by Dr. Bob Lopez. Dr. Lopez is a board certified radiologist with a subspecialty in musculoskeletal radiology. He is a partner at Charlotte Radiology and serves as the MSK section chief. This section is designed to be interactive, so please use the raise your hand function in Zoom webinar. If you're on your computer, um, there should be a button you can press, or if you're on the phone line, you can dial star nine in order to raise your hand and we'll be able to, uh, to call on you for, for questions. If you have any questions, um, whether it's specifically related to this MSK topic or if there's another MSK topic, we really want this to be an interactive session. Um, you can also use the Q&A section um, on your computer to, to also type in questions. With that, I will hand it over to you, Dr. Lopez. Okay, thanks, Lauren. So, um, hi, everybody. Uh, it's kind of weird to give a virtual talk uh, to a bunch of folks, and I'm kind of excited about it, but hopefully I won't screw it up. So this was a very ambitious title, uh, and you'll see but I do think that with, uh, and I, I'm really excited about the addition of our new 3T magnet at South Park, because I think that we will be able to offer some, some really state-of-the-art uh, MSK imaging uh, in that location, as well as uh, throughout Atrium. So on that, I will start the talk. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, and basically, I wrote this down as fact, because this is the conventional wisdom, right? Arthrography uh, has been shown to improve the accuracy for labral tears in both the hip and shoulder. And one of the reasons that we always thought that was true is because, number one, we were distending the joint so we could see a little bit better uh, the kind of uh, where the contrast went, and therefore between the labrum and, and, the, and the bone in both the hip and the shoulder. But also because we're putting uh, contrast in there, we are obviously improving contrast resolution. Um, and, uh, and the literature would support that. The older literature definitely supports that, that MR arthrography is better at 1.5 for the hip and shoulder for looking at labral tears. However, you know, there's, there's, there are some issues of arthrography. I mean, one of them is being radiation, uh, that we do these injections under fluoroscopy. I got this out of the internet, some kind of weird uh, blog. This kid had a hip ar arthro in a surgery, and uh, she's like the only happy patient I've ever seen with a needle sticking out of her. I don't know who took that picture for her, but basically, you know, we had a fluoroscope, we, we put a needle into the hip, and we inject a contrast solution. And this actually adds a pretty significant cost to the whole procedure, uh, because not only we chart, have to charge the patient for the procedure, but we're also charging for a contrast enhanced MRI interpretation. The procedure, is, as, as you all know, is, is very uh, uh, safe, but there are some potential complications. I mean, you know, infection is always a dreaded complication every time you, you kind of go into a joint. Hematomas can happen, and sometimes, you know, you can, you can kind of ding one of the lateral femoral cutaneous branches, and it, and, and it does smart and hurt. So it would be nice to basically not have to do a hip arthrography and still be able to see this labral tear. And this is a nice example of a, a nice labral tear in an axial T1 weighted fat suppressed image. So I've got a couple of uh, pictures here uh, that were painted, you know, back in the 1900s by Claude Monet of the Waterloo Bridge. And he basically wanted to look at how the sunset and the fog and stuff like that. And obviously one of them has much better contrast resolution than the other one. So how do we actually improve contrast resolution uh, if we don't have Monet painting it uh, with MRI if we're not using our uh, some contrast in the joint or IV? So the answer is basically very, uh, this is my, this is as, uh, as physics as this is gonna get, but basically the answer is always MR physics. Uh, and basically we've got a, a piece of tissue, this can be the shoulder or the hip, and we're trying to get some signal out of it. And in order for us to get signal out of it, the most important thing is actually the field strength of the magnet, as well as the design of the coil, because the further away we are from the area of interest, the harder we're gonna get some good signal out of that. And you can see here that there has been some great new designs with coils, where we're basically able to wrap around the coil a little bit better in the shoulder and now also in the hip, and we can do some dedicated extremity imaging, which before we actually 
were limited by coil design. And this is actually a uh, stock picture from GE of the Pioneer 3T magnet, uh, which is the one that we have at uh, South Park. One of the nice things about this uh, particular 3T is that it actually has the same bore size as a 1.5, so it's a 70 centimeter, so it's, it's almost like an open bore, so that's kind of nice. So this is basically, again, to remind me that I'm kind of a goofball and I like uh, history and physics, and this is Tesla. So when you're going from 1.5 Tesla to 3 Tesla, the signal uh, is proportional to the magnetic field strength squared. Uh, and as you know, uh, uh, we, we measure magnetic fields in Tesla, and uh, the Earth magnetic field, for instance, is like, I think, 0.5 Gauss like around the uh, equator or something like that. And uh, one Tesla is equal to 10,000 Gauss. So we're basically talking a pretty, pretty strong magnetic field. Of course, this is the new Teslas, which I don't know, but someday I will maybe. Uh, so the signal, when we actually go from, from 1.5 to 3T, we are really bolstering that, that signal up. And that's going to make a difference for our contrast resolution. So I, I put this alternative just because I'm a goofball. But basically, the new fact, I think, is that there really is uh, no improved sensitivity or inter-observer variability for hip labral tears uh, when you compare arthrography at 1.5 versus 3T. And in fact, interesting to me, uh, 3T MR arthrography doesn't really add anything. And there's actually been some, this is mostly retrospective series where they've compared apples, uh, apples, apples, 3T retrospective series versus 1.5, 3T uh, versus 1.5 MRI equal for sensitivity. And then actually no significant difference, but this is not, not a big series. Uh, there was a really nice paper uh, when I was uh, preparing for this talk that I hadn't read in, in uh, European radiology, where they had 67 patients with FAI who actually underwent first a 3T MR, then they had orthography, and then they had a 1.5T uh, MR, MR arthrogram. And the sensitivity was a little better for a 3T, but probably within, you know, reason for not, not statistically significant. But it actually, the 3T was statistically significant better for cartilage defects. And that's actually very important for uh, FAI. So when we see here, and this is from that article from Chopra in European Radiology 2018, here's the arthrogram, here's the non-arthrogram, 1.5, you can see the labral tear, nice cartilage. And then here is same article, different patient, nice labral tear in the arthrogram, nice labral tear on the non-arthrogram 3T, but we're actually seeing this delaminating cartilage lesion here which is getting blurred out and we really couldn't see it on the 1.5 uh, arthro. And this is some example of, so, of uh, some arthros that we have been doing. We've installed uh, the Pioneer 3T, uh, I think it was late January in, uh, at South Park, which is where we have been doing some arthrography to, to this day, uh, looking for label tears. And we have found that it's really got exquisite uh, contrast detail, even without the arthrograms. And I'll show you an example of that. So this was a, this, I, I like this example a lot because this was a patient who came in and he had hip pain and he had actually had a 1.5 like a year or two before uh, at our South Park location. And when we look here, I hope you can see that arrow. Basically this patient has some degenerative change with some osteophytes, there's a subchondral cyst, and then there's a, definitely a clear cut label tear. And this is a non-arthrogram with a paralabel cyst. Again, known distension of the shoulder, but you can really, I mean, the, of the hip, but you can really see that labral tear very, very nicely. And then when I pulled the study from a couple of years ago at our 1.5, you can see the difference. Very, very hard to see that labral tear. We can see the paralabral cyst, we can see the subchondral cyst, but the labral tear itself without the arthrogram, arthrogram is, is almost impossible to see. So I thought that was kind of nice, uh, just kind of going through our own uh, uh, recent experience here. And you know, sometimes we think, you know, our, uh, as clinicians that, that somebody has a labral tear and, and they don't have a labral tear. And, and uh, one of my partners does this beautiful arthrogram. Uh, and you can see the fluoroscopic uh, image of the needle, the contrast being instilled. This patient was a, a kind of a, a, a real intensity, uh, kind of a sports freak who had a lot of hip pain when he worked out, but he also had some hip pain when he wasn't working out. So it's hard to see, but in, in this particular image, but there was a very tiny labral tear. Uh, but what's, what's really most important is this patient had an osteoid osteoma. 
which in retrospect you can see on this uh, uh, on the fluoroscopic image. So it actually would have been nice not to subject this 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 guy to to an arthrogram, but well, I mean, we made the diagnosis. So everybody's I'd now thinking like, well, Lopez, you know, once again is not really showing me shoulders or what I'm really interested in. He's only showing me hips. So the reason I'm showing you hips is, is because I feel that the literature uh, really supports the fact that non-arthrograms for hips for, uh, is, is really the way to go for labral tears. For shoulders, it's a little different. Um, there was an initial study done in 2009, coils were a little bit different, which basically said, well, when we look at shoulders, we still need to do arthrography. This was from Tim McGee in Florida. But there's recently been more studies with better coil design uh, that is now basically saying, well, there's really no difference for rotator cuff tears, even partial rotator cuff tears between arthrography and 3T MR. And, then, and, a, and, and another recent uh, meta-analysis basically said, yeah, we agree, but for, in the, case, in the sense of anterior instability, probably we still need to do an arthrogram. However, for slap tears, uh, which are superior labral anterior posterior tears, uh, non-arthrograms are actually as good and some feel could be better. And this was a really nice meta-analysis from NYU where they looked at all the slap uh, literature and they initially said, well, you know, there is a superiority for orthography, but when you break it down between 3T and 1.5, number one, 3T is superior, and number two, 3T is actually a little bit better. And I think the reason for that is that you tend to overcall the sublabral recess on the arthrogram sometimes, as opposed to this is a non-arthrogram and you can see the slap tear quite nicely usually. This is a patient, again, I just kind of went back and tried to find people that we had done um, studies on like a year or two before. And this is a study done uh, with a 3T. This is a study done a year earlier before at one of the other atrium facilities. You can really see that uh, detail and that uh, slap uh, degenerative tear actually extending back here on the 3T. Before it was a little harder to see. Still could see it though. So uh, I used to like to go to get dim sum uh, back when I could actually go to a restaurant in Chinatown and get dim sum. I don't know when I'll do that again. But anyway, I never knew what the heck to get. So I'm always trying to figure out, you know, when, what, what exam do you order? And, you know, we're always, as you know, in Charlotte Radiology, we have somebody available you know, almost, uh, well, definitely throughout the day and into the evening uh, that you can discuss a particular patient if you have any questions at any time. But uh, I think the, the data would support that if a patient has hip pain and you're worried about uh, label tears or cartilage stimulation, especially in the, in the setting of FAI, I think it would support that we can just safe, we can safely identify most of that pathology without having to subject that patient to an arthrogram. I think for shoulder pain, Rotator cuff tears and slap tears, a patient just has shoulder pain. I think 3T is, is definitely as good as arthrography. I actually think 1.5 is probably okay for most patients with these kinds of uh, considerations, uh, except maybe slap tear. And I still think of possibly for shoulder instability, I don't think we're quite there yet, especially if it's a traumatic unidirectional, you know, band card that goes for surgery kind of instability. I think I stick that the, the sensitivity would still be better for anterior label tears there. Not sure about multidirectional instability, but I would expect it probably be the same thing. All right, so so far I've been giving you all the, the good stuff. So, you know, what is the bad stuff with 3T? Well, obviously some people can have certain implants that can limit. This is a, an MRI uh, SureScan Medtronic, which I think is a 1.5, but I'm not sure it can be used for 3T. Anybody who has any kind of uh, metallic implant, uh, uh, obviously there's gonna be a bloom artifact uh, and the MRI, this is a patient at a total hip, obviously, and this is gonna be way worse for the 3T as opposed to 1.5T, despite having a metal artifact reduction. So I am at the talk of my very quick blurb. I hope that I haven't either bored you or basically said something just absolutely nuts. Uh, and if, you, if I have, let me know. Uh, so, but if you say like, hey, okay, I get it. Uh, where, can I, where can I get these? Well, this is the, where, where there are three T's. There's a, one at Pineville, there's a two at Maine actually, uh, although once one of these is kind of tied up in the OR, but we do do some uh, inpatients there, but there is one for outpatients at, uh, at, Med at the Medical Plaza. And then there's one at Northeast. Um, but again, it, the only dedicated outpatient facility is at South Park. And 
I would encourage you, especially if the patients are in, in, in this neck of the woods, to kind of schedule them there uh, for convenience sake. And I think it's also maybe a little cheaper. Anyway, that is, I think this is my last slide. Uh, and if anybody has any comments, suggestions, uh, or thinks, wants to ask about anything else, uh, go ahead. I purposely did not uh, talk about other joints, uh, basically, because uh, I don't know. I guess the literature is really not as robust. I would tell you that for the elbow, I think that for the elbow, you know, a lot of people have talked about uh, not doing orthography for a while, though I'm st I still think it probably helps. And I think the literature suggests that even, and the 3T uh, literature doesn't really, there's not a lot in there. And I think for the wrists, actually, uh, a non-orthogram with the TFCC tears is, is just as good. And I think the literature has supported that for a while. Okay. Great, thank you, Dr. Lopez. It looks like we've got one question. Um, Kevin, you should be able to talk. Well, can you hear me now? Yeah, Kevin. Yeah. Um, so I know one of the, it, it's great to do it. Thanks for the summary. It, it kind of puts it in perspective for a lot of the joint aspects. Um, as far as for being able to get on the magnet, I know that in the non-facility that you're talking about for South is, um, you know, it's, it's predominantly where it's looking at neuro and other types of imaging such as that. Is it going to be uh, more available or are we going to get more 3T uh, time to be able to do more MSK cases with it? So I can tell you that I just checked with that because I didn't want to promote something if we like didn't have availability. We actually have availability in that magnet uh, for, for all comers. So right now it's, it's actually in, in our system, it's actually underutilized for, for, so I figured it'd be, you know, great if we could kind of now, you know, will it become, will it become harder? as if, if especially after my fantastic PowerPoint, I don't really know. But I think for now, it's actually quite available and they're gonna expand, uh, they may even expand hours of operation there too, Kevin. Gotcha. The, um, the other challenge is that when you're clinically looking at a patient trying to decide, you know, sometimes it's difficult whenever you're looking at that labral pathology to say, you know, do you really think it's a slap, in which case the 3T would be okay, versus, you know, if there's a, non-traumatic situation, um, but they're having anterior um, subluxation type pain, you know, you may be able to differentiate anterior versus superior labral pathology, but a lot of times now we're also seeing posterior labral pathology. And I don't know that you had mentioned that about posterior. What are you, what have you seen on that one for, you know, on the, the Kim type <laughs> and stuff like that for the shoulder? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think on the shoulder, you know, again, you know, the, the literature would support that if anybody has instability, right, then, we probably still need to do arthrography in the shoulder. I mean, I'm just saying that the people who have, you know, the, the so-called functional, you know, micro instability or stuff like that, that ends up being slap. Uh, I think those people can, are, are the ones, you know, who, you know, especially if somebody has, it comes in and has an acute pain, right. Or has like, you know, has an event, has acute pain. They usually have joint fluid as it is. Right. It's these people who have like chronic pain and then you examine them and you think they're unstable. They might, you know, you're not sure. Okay, I get that. I think those people should go to arthrography, especially if you're worried that there is either anterior or posterior labral. And, and the literature would su suggest that posterior labral also, like, you know, like Kim lesions are really hard to see, uh, obviously, if you don't distend the joint. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking if you've got a patient and you're thinking, you know, let's say you're not doing ultrasound, you've done the ultrasound, rotator cuff's fine, you're worried about a slap, something like that. You don't think it's unstable. It's not unreasonable to try to get a non-arthrogram. So I think most of the time you would get it now. You know, if they are unstable, I do think that, uh, you know, the other thing is surgeon preference. Like surgeons surge still kind of want to see arthrography for instability around here, I think. Great, thank you. All right. As a reminder, you can raise your hand um, through the, the Zoom webinar on your computer and we'll be able to take you off mute. Um, or you can type in your question in the Q&A. And also, I, I wanted to throw out there, Lawrence, since it's the first time I'm doing this. You know, if, if you're going to record this and people will see it later whenever they have time, if they want to just email me with questions, you know, feel free to do that. Perfect. It is robert.lopez at charlotteradiology.com. Yes. 
And I'll, I'll open that right away, unless it comes from one of my section members and I'll try to ignore it. No, I'm kidding. All right, we'll give, uh, we'll give it one more minute. Looks like we don't have any other questions or comments in the queue right now. Um, any, other, any other parting thoughts you'd like to share, Dr. Lopez? Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I wish I had better lightning in this office, that's about it, no. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I, I do think that uh, I'm very excited about, we've, we've revamped, oh, the other thing I did wanna mention, which I guess, and Kevin, I don't know if you're still on, but I wanted to kind of remind, remind us, is now that we are doing this dedicated better imaging resolution with these smaller coils, it's really kind of important that if you've got somebody, and you know, if you're worried about FAI and you're worried about uh, definite hip pathology, to order a hip MRI. But if you're not sure, if you think it might be related to the SI joint or stuff like that, we're not really routinely imaging that now because that's a larger field of view. So we would need to, you know, you, you need to order a pelvis MRI. That, or, does that make sense? I, um, I did have another question for you. So when, what um, diagnoses, so like, let's say you're looking at AVN, um, either hip or shoulder, um, if you're, you know, looking for other type of pathological processes like that, is there a reason to stay with the 1.5 and save the 3T for others? You know, I don't want us to overutilize it where we, when we need it, we can't have it. Um, I, I agree with you 100%. So if you're thinking ABN, you see something on the radiograph that looks like ABN. I mean, 1.5 it has great contrast resolution and you don't, you're not really gaining anything from the 3T. The only thing the 3T is really helping you with is the really tiny intraarticular stuff like the labrum, right? Those are the ones that we can actually now be able to see and actually see even better than, you know, as good as orthography with it. So I think if you're thinking like, hey, I'm going to get a routine hip and you weren't thinking getting an arthrogram in the first place, then you can probably just go 1.5. Maybe that would make the most sense. All right, thanks. Yeah. All right, I think that looks like that uh, wraps us up from a questions perspective. Thank you for your presentation, Dr. Lopez, and thank you um, for your participation on the line. And uh, we look forward to addressing any questions you may have. Again, you can email Dr. Lopez at robert.lopez at charlotteradiology.com with any MSK related questions. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Thank you.